so there's a few programs that are sort of in the crosshairs for the enterprise that we're working on. Uh, to start out, we, we recently launched two new programs that are going to be very interesting to follow for the enterprise space. Yeah. One is Passpoint, which is um, a, a new capability that uh, automatically will allow mobile devices that have Wi-Fi to associate and uh, establish a link to a network without user intervention and, and at the highest level of security. So this is a terrific uh, one-two combination that we're delivering. And, and how is that going to be enabled? Is that in, in tandem with FIDO Alliance or some kind of two-token uh, or, or token authentication system? There is a, you know, a very intricate uh, authentication techniques, uh, but they are triggered by the credentials that most people already carry in their devices, such as uh, SIM. Just based on my SIM card and the credential on there that my carrier already has, I can associate with a new Wi-Fi network with Passkey. And then I would assume there's going to be some kind of federation or authentication back to the SIM provider or whoever the authentication vendor is. That's right. So there is a there is a you know a proper link that's established you know all the way up to whoever has those credentials, right? The yeah. certificate authority. Um, so it's uh, it, it's something that mimics quite a bit uh, what the cellular community already does to authenticate you as you as you roam networks around the world. And the vision is exactly that, that with Wi-Fi being so available everywhere, right, in enterprises, in, uh, you know, the, the consumer space, certainly at home, even, uh, you know, out in, in malls and sh in sh coffee shops and airplanes, sure. right, that you, sh you should just carry one set of credentials and that those should be honored wherever you go. So there's, uh, there's all the technology that we've put in place now that we just recently launched. Probably the, you know, the second part of the solution is uh, what we're seeing evolve now, which is a bunch of the roaming relationships that need to be established by all those uh, folks who are providing Wi-Fi services. It is uh, a unique recipe of technologies that was developed in the Wi-Fi Alliance. Certainly, there are elements of 802.11u, which is uh, inter-wireless network roaming from IEEE. Uh, but there are a number of other techniques that, were, that are novel and were developed in the Wi-Fi Alliance. Uh, for example, there's a new algorithm for the device to have the intelligence to scan what available Wi-Fi networks are in the environment at the time and to make an intelligent choice of which network to associate to based on uh, the, consume, the, the, the preferences of the end user, subscriptions that the end user may have, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Well, the, it's, a, it's strictly a software solution. Uh, so there's, there's really no hardware requirements, which is to say that for a lot of the install base, uh, the, it, the individual vendors will have an option of whether to make that kind of a firmware update available to the consumer base, to the customer base. Yeah. Um, but we do expect, I mean, we probably have certified, uh, I believe, over 100 devices already, both, uh, you know, handsets and uh, devices in the yeah. network to support this. So like, how are you seeing 802.11 AC and its various waves, and what's your role in all that? Uh, so the role that the Wi-Fi line is playing is, and this is the traditional role, yeah. right, which is to establish interoperability. Uh, 802.11 AC is the next version of Wi-Fi. It's a, the first version of Wi-Fi that's going to deliver gigabit per second speeds. Yeah. So there is a, a tremendous amount of improvements in the in the protocol, um, and uh, we expect to launch in the interoperability program, which will formally sort of unleash the market, right? When consumers can have confidence that they'll buy a product that will interoperate across brands and across time. Uh, and we'll do that mid-year this year. With the 802.11 uh, N rollout, there was a lot of pre-standard implementations uh, and a little bit of early fragmentation, which caused some confusion in the marketplace. Uh, what did the Wi-Fi lines learn from that experience that now you're going to pull into AC to make it a smoother rollout? Right. You know, when we first uh, got into 802.11 N, um, it, was, it was really we were drawn by the market. There was such anticipation for yeah. that in early implementations that, uh, that were not interoperable that uh, it became apparent that we did need to step in and, and provide interoperability. Uh, we were years away from having the standard finalized when early products started emerging, right? Yeah. Uh, we learned from that and sort of uh, uh, institutionalized that experience in the Wi-Fi lines. And this time, we will have a program that's uh, delivered in advance of the, of the specification being done in IEEE. Uh, and as I mentioned, we'll deliver that yeah. mid-year, but the, the IEEE is not going to be done with AC for some time yet. For me, I see... 
called four or five vendors this week already. They're saying, oh, I have an AC module today, and this is pretty standard. So, and I know that that's outside of the scope of what you can do, but how do you deal with that? Because there's always people that want better, faster. Well, uh, the what, what we have, uh, you know, we play the role that we continue to play, which yeah. is, um, you know, when, when folks go out and buy a, a device that's not certified, then there is the risk that that device will not work properly with other devices, yeah. whether the, those other devices are certified or not. But our expectation is that once uh, certification, the certification program from the Wi-Fi Alliance is, uh, is complete and launched and available, that the vendors who have gone out with early products will come back around and certify those products and up, upgrade them. Uh, so that they are uh, operating in a certified mode. That's what we saw with AND, that's what we expect with AC. It's a very complicated, uh, complicated technology, by the way. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's really going to benefit to have the certification program out. And then carriers are, have their own speeds, etc. Is there any kind of standard or is there demand already for proper carrier handoffs to a Wi-Fi network such that I can seamlessly roam and drop between the two? Is that something that I know it's uh, years ago people used to talk of cognitive radio and stuff like this. Is that uh, an effort that the Wi-Fi Alliance is involved in in any way? That is an excellent question. And there are early implementations yeah. by some service providers that do this seamless handover between Wi-Fi and cellular. And there's a lot of interest in this area. Um, yeah. Certainly we have dozens of operators in the Wi-Fi Alliance who are looking into this. Uh, and there's an area, you know, it's a, certainly an area of interest. You know, I, I suspect that in the not too distant future, we're going to have, uh, you know, intelligent methods to provide that seamless handover where it'll be invisible to end users. And things. What's what's Ygig? I'm not as familiar with it as uh, it probably should be. Ygig is um, is another trade name for um, for the 60 gigahertz technology okay. that is uh, somewhat synonymous with uh, 802.11 AD. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so as you as you probably know, Wi-Fi Lens is now uh, also working on yeah. 60 gigahertz, which will be multiple gigabit per second speeds at a shorter range. What's the timeline on on that in terms of specification and then you know uh, proof of concept kind of things? There's already demonstrations from companies who have available commercial product in this using the specification. So it's uh, we're almost in a similar mode that we were in with 802.11n, you know, early days where folks uh, have already, you know, they haven't waited for the certification, nor you know, yeah. nor should they, right? They they have to address their own commercial interests. But Wi-Fi Alliance is working to make sure that we deliver interoperability here soon. And uh, currently, it's looking like maybe you know late, uh, next year we would have uh, the interoperability program. So I'm uh, thinking uh, 802.11 AD YGIG versus AC. Right. Uh, why wouldn't I just make the leap to AD and skip AC altogether if I can get the better speed? Right. Well, for one, a AD is not quite available yet, right? It's not broadly available yet. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, that means you don't have as many options, as many brands, as much of uh, sure. the the the, uh, <clears throat> the benefit of the volume mass market being open yet. Uh, so there's that. The, the characteristics are basically different, right? Okay. Um, 60 gigahertz is a short-range technology that's uh, intended to be for in-room applications only. Okay, um, so like specifically like in a, a data center or whatever it might be. Could you that could there be, or? right. Uh, you know, there's uh, some of the use cases involved, you know, fast sync or wireless docking, you know, coming into your desktop environment, having yeah. all your devices automatically connect wirelessly. Uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance is a very healthy organization, and I, I think uh, the expectation that our members have, uh, in, uh, you know, have imposed on the whole organization is to be visionary and to, uh, you know, our, our vision is seamless connectivity. So certainly, we're not uh, uh, sort of self-restricting in terms of 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Uh, we want to see Wi-Fi adopted broadly, and beyond that, um, you know, to. Uh, to take on challenges of uh, generally seamless connectivity. For that reason, we've set up uh, you know, organizations, for example, that are focused on smart grid. We're taking on uh, YGIG 60 gigahertz work uh, recently. And um, because we're so effective, um, our expectation is we'll be successful in all of these areas.